Hi, I'm Randall Loy and I want to welcome you back to the Infertility Channel. Today we're going to be talking about a surgery that many of you have already had or many of you may be facing. It's called laparoscopy. Laparoscopy, also called minimally invasive surgery or endoscopy or band-aid surgery or keyhole surgery, lots of synonyms, means it's an outpatient endoscopic procedure. Laparoscopy was first developed by a Swedish physician by the name of Hans Christian Jacobius. In 1910, he did the very first human laparoscopy. And many years went by and laparoscopy was not used for much of anything at all except for diagnostics. But that all changed around 1981 when a German physician by the name of Dr. Kurt Zim began making instruments to go through these little bitty incisions. Now usually laparoscopy involves an incision about one centimeter in the belly button and a couple of quarter inch incisions elsewhere. So you have these quarter inch to half inch incisions. When we do simple laparoscopy, that might be two or three or four such incisions. With robotic surgery, sometimes that's five or six incisions like that. Anyway, Dr. Zim made instruments such that doctors could then perform more complex procedures such as appendectomy or gallbladder removal or removal of the colon or complex gynecologic procedures. 30 years ago when I was a resident, we couldn't do much at all through these little keyhole incisions. We just took a look inside and made a diagnosis. Sometimes we could sterilize a woman's fallopian tubes through the scope, but that was about it in terms of anything we could do through a laparoscope. Then Dr. Kurt Zim brought his entire team to the United States and began teaching people like me how to do these complex procedures, such that we began doing these in the mid to late 80s and we're now able to do fantastic things through very small incisions. So why would somebody do laparoscopy, the keyhole or band-aid surgery over laparotomy, the traditional larger incisions? Well, it involves less bleeding, less pain, decreased hospital stay, and decreased time out of work. But there are some disadvantages as well. Number one is that there is a decreased depth of field for the surgeon. We have to operate where all the instruments look quite a bit alike in terms of their handles, but just the tips differ. And we also have no tactile appreciation. We have to do everything off of a video monitor. So that makes it a little bit more challenging, but some of us have now done thousands of these things, as I'm sure your reproductive endocrinologist is also quite experienced. Now, some reproductive endocrinologists have actually even stopped doing laparoscopy and concentrate just on hysteroscopy, looking into the uterine cavity. If you need laparoscopy for endometriosis or for removal of a tube or removal of a tumor, well, go ahead and talk to your OBGYN and your reproductive endocrinologist if you have one to see who is best suited for performing your procedure. As with any procedure, there are a few risks. And with laparoscopy, the belly button surgery, there are risks of infection. There are about one in 1,000. Typically, an antibiotic is given to you before your case. And second would be the possibility of damage by the instruments to the intestine, to the bladder, and maybe a great blood vessel. So there is a very small chance, probably about one in 7,000 or so, that you might require further surgery, blood transfusions, antibiotics, and you might even have a prolonged hospitalization time. So all those things are possible. I would like to leave you with an anecdote. Some years ago, a physician friend of mine said, would you please perform laparoscopy on my mother. It turns out that her OBGYN had diagnosed a benign tumor of the ovary. I said, well, I really don't do those so much in older patients. He says, come on, it's like riding a bicycle. If you can perform those in your 35-somethings, you can do it on a 78-something. I said, okay, that's fine. So we performed the surgery quite successfully, but because of her age of 78, I decided to keep her overnight for observation. In the immediate post-op phase, I told her that everything went well and she said, I have a little bit of a problem. What you may not know is I've just remarried. Herbert is 83 and he's like a 19 year old and he wants to have sex all the time. So I've told him it could be some time after my surgery. How long do you think? I said, well, probably a week or so. So the next morning I met her darling husband, little tweed jacket, hat, mustache, and he had his little suitcase by him for her things. And he said, honey, did you ask the doctor? Did you ask the doctor how long, how long? She said, Herbert, I asked, six months. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please send those to the address below. Also hit subscribe, tell your friends about us, and I'll see you next week on the Infertility Channel. Thanks again.